And welcome to Before the Bounce. This segment's brought to you by the Exchange Hotel in Gawler. Joining us is the Executive Director of the Breakthrough Mental Health Foundation, John Mannion. John, thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks very much, mate. You know, what a big subject, isn't it? It's just a, a huge subject, and uh, you know, I think we've all been affected by it. Probably a lot like me, probably don't understand it, you know, uh, um, but it's just in the community, it just, it's so strong in our community at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You, you would have seen the changes over, what, the 30 odd years that you've uh, been working in this yeah, field. It's, uh, it, you, you're right, I think you, you, you're right on the point where you say, you know, it, it's, it's, it's got a big impact. Um, statistics show us one in five people have got a diagnosis of a mental health issue at the moment. Mm. That's those who've actually been and sought help. It's probably closer to one in three people because we still don't open up and talk about it. Um, and we also know that um, throughout our life, then um, 45% of us will experience yeah. a mental health challenge. So that, that's, but, that's a but big But 32 challenge. years ago when you, when you started, I mean, mm. those statistics wouldn't have been anything like that. I mean, I mean, I was at a really powerful footy club and I think there was five or six you know, suicides over, you know, the, you know, probably over the last you know, sort of, uh, you know, seven to 10 years, yeah, I would yeah. say. I look back at these particular players and they're, you know, they're great players, as strong as a ball. You know, how, how does that work? You know, yeah, because I think um, when, when you're channeling everything into something you're really, really good at, mm. you can escape into that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're, you know, that's that's a great way to which we get away. We can actually fake things. We talk, you know, we're able to, to channel thing uh, our energy into something, but it might actually be masking everything else. Mm. So when we go away from that footy field, um, do we still have the same adulation? Do we still feel yeah. part of a, of, a, of a sense of belonging of part of a team, or are we actually on our own and we're quite that's isolated? That's a great point. Um, so. That, that sort of challenge is, is, is really sort of complex. Um, we see that in everyday society yeah. now. You know, we, we, it's easy for us to uh, go in to do things that, that, that we enjoy to do, mm. but then when our illness takes over, that's yeah. the first signs we see when someone's deteriorating because that's what they stop. And society ch has changed that much. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're just the pressures. Everything we do is in the window, isn't it? Everything's all on social oh, media. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. from, if you look, think about it from a sporting arena, um, if, if somebody does something wrong in, in Adelaide Oval, then 45,000 people will tell them they've done it wrong. Yeah. I sense an email out when I came out tonight. No one told me if I did it right or wrong. There wasn't so 45,000 people yeah. looking at it. So my work's not under a microscope, yeah. but in the sports and arena, I've seen a little bit of, uh, you know, Facebook. I'm not a big Facebook user. Um, and, you know, some of the, the hits on, you know, some of the, you know, the really big name players that play for either the Crows or the Power, mm. they've, had a, mm. they've had a bad game. It's, it's just cruel. You know, it's just mm. cruel. And I suppose you're right, society's changed where I might have had one or two, you know, lions son, I didn't have a good game, or whatever the case may be, and kicked out in the fall too many times. Um, and it's it's done and dusted. Mm. But nowadays you you can wake up, get on the, the, the you know the uh, you know the phone, and all of a sudden you're getting smacked yeah. and, and personally. Yeah, and personally. And, and, yeah. and this is why obviously a lot of the clubs do programs where they actually build in you know how do you manage social media, how do you manage the pressure, Fantastic, how do you manage that yeah. transition. Yeah. I think that's really important. They're the same sort of things we're teaching in schools now. You know, as you, schools you, yeah, as well. I mean, how, schools. Yeah, how do you manage the social media tough. in your school? How do you manage all your different social platforms? And obviously, social media has a really positive impact for us, but there are other challenges within that you know it's mm. it's effectively changed the way in which we communicate with each other it's much faster and easier to yeah. do a text than it is to actually connect with somebody and bully as well without um, facing yeah, exactly, the, yeah. the eyeballs yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's easier than ever and as someone that's always told to get off their phone because i'm on it too much yeah uh you, you see it all the time obviously got to um know quite a few people that play at the elite elite level uh and when you talk to them and uh, one in particular, we posed the question just in all seriousness, how much hate mail would you get? Mm. It wasn't just five, ten, it was, we're talking 500,000 So easy to messages, send it. Uh, mm. yeah. Across the board, it's, it's you know, it, it's so easy to do now. Yeah. You see players now starting to try and call people out on it. Uh, Dane Beans, one's a big one, he, he started to, you know, publicly shame those people. All it did probably was then put a bigger target on his head, as mm -hmm. bad as that sounds. Yeah. Uh, but people then started, it was easy for the other people to careful. start joining in and going after. Mm. How do you guys, as a, as a um, as breakthrough, ha uh, handle or try and deal with the, the social media side of it? Yeah, I mean, as you said before, social media has has has, its, has a role. You know, it has a really really strong role. It's a great way in which you can actually sell strong messages, um, how you can communicate effectively. But it also has that negative impact, doesn't it? So we've um, been doing a piece of work um, with Professor Philip Slee that's looking at a program called the Peace Pack, and it's a school bullying program. And one of the modules in there is about how do you actually manage the social media conversation? How do you manage the tro trolling that takes place? How do you manage the negative 
conversations, trying to change those behaviours. The programme itself, when it was rolled out in, in its first trial school, reduced bullying incidents by 50%, which is massive. If you think about bullying and the negative impact on bullying on our mental health, then that then has that impact on our, our anxiety levels, our depression levels, our sense of belonging, sense of feeling, self-esteem. So looking at ways in which we can teach children how to use social media effectively, mm. that's a great way in which you can change that and change the outcome. What about society now? How, how much do you think uh, uh, we've accepted to say, you know what, I've got an issue? Um, yeah, I, I think that has changed dramatically. You know, mm -hmm. organisations like Are You Okay have done an enormous job about normalising the mental mm -hmm. health conversation. Um, over in the UK, there's a great programme called It's Okay Not to Be Okay. Yeah, um, and, and, and that is true. You know, we, we but it's great about have having a programme, but it's about <clears throat> I'm I'm comfortable enough to put my hand up. And, yeah. and we're talking children. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm just thought, well, when you said, you know, uh, you know, schools. I mean. That's you know that they're most vulnerable, and we, yeah. we hear some so many tragic you know circumstances uh, you know with some yeah, of the I mean, some we, we young see, children. Yeah, we're seeing presentations of children with anxiety and depression at the yeah. age of four and five. Yeah. I was still working out you know uh, how, how I could sit on my chair or spin round or yeah. what have you and not fall yeah. over and stuff not thinking about how my mental health was. Um, yeah. So I think that the way in which we're now normalising it and actually having those conversations and actually making it safe for people to put their hand up. Yeah. It's and about feel confident. And feel confident yeah. to do this. If yeah. I do this, someone's actually going to listen to me. And that rolls out into sort of all areas, especially the work we're trying to do now with the Sample mm. League. Um, which is about That's how do you brilliant. have that conversation yeah. in, 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 in your sporting club mm. where you have two champions that I can actually go to and know that I'll have a safe conversation, know that they'll be able to listen to me and they've got the skills to listen to me and then they'll signpost me into the right place. Because part of about when we start to disclose how we're feeling is to do it in a way in which we feel safe mm. and that we can feel trusted and then it won't ever come back on us. Because so we, haven't, we haven't been a society you know, that, that, yeah. that will do that, no, you know? No, no, no. Well, actually, we've got, we've got a society where it's uh, everyone wins at all costs. You know, yeah. we've, we've seen football in, 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 in uh, uh, sporting communities trying to win any sporting event at all costs. Yeah. Mean, that's never actually succeeded, has it? No. When you then start to look at the culture about working together as a team, working together as a unit, achieving things a, a, as a collective, that's when you see those better outcomes mm. for people. And that's the same thing with, with our mental health. Yeah, and as, as a 24-year-old now, as of last weekend, oh, it's, uh, <clears throat> I probably live through those teen stages it when phones were first yeah. introduced um, and social media was first introduced. I think I was 12 when I first had a Facebook account when it pretty pretty early in its days. Um, so I've probably lived, seen it all firsthand. Uh, probably ashamed to say that, you know, bullying and that I've probably yeah. been a part of, put the hand up, probably didn't quite understand mm. um, the effects it would have, that sort of thing. You obviously learn that as you grow and um, had it reciprocated the other way as well. It's mm. um, it's tough out there. It's mm. uh, it's certainly not easy as a mm. as a young person in today's mm. um, today's system and with social media. Mm. Well, I think in, if you're looking at the social media context. People are wanting responses and they're wanting them rapidly and they're not just wanting it through one conversation. So they'll be on a Facebook platform. They'll be on a um, uh, an Instagram platform, <clears throat> they'll, they'll have five or six platforms all open at once, all answering different questions, all having an impact on each of those questions. Um, so that in itself is complex, isn't it? How do we bring that back into a way in which we empower our children to manage those conversations, manage them in a safe way? Yeah. Um, and then how do we build that up? So it has a great role, social media. We should never sort of diss it but it has to be managed in an effective way for people. What so. about pressures in life? I mean, social media is one thing, but you're right, you know, it's, you know, we need it and, you know, and that'll, you know, it works itself out. And, uh, but pressures in life as well, because, mm. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we hear some you know, horrible stories about uh, probably you know, old school that, you know, that probably aren't, uh, you know, probably really attuned to social media, but mm. life's really affecting them as well, mm. you know, and the, the society. So, yeah. um, I mean, that, that in itself is complex. That's why mental health is, is yeah, very complex. That's right, because yeah. there's the psychological, the social, there's financial, there's relationships. There's a lot of to all, it, yeah. All the different pieces. The best way to describe it is, is that um, when you're looking at mental health and well-being, it's really a jigsaw. Yeah. You know, it's a very complex jigsaw, but if we actually look for the corner and start in one yeah. piece and we can build on from there, like every good jigsaw. It's hard to, t you know, to, to help people and well, that's probably the you know for someone who who's you know stepping back now and and uh someone who wants help well, i'd say please go and you know yeah. go on and speak to the but experts it, but, it, but if, so, if someone comes to you listen that's a simple thing you can do yeah. listen to the first this first point then you can do the signposting if someone's been brave enough to ask you for some help just listen to them it's very very powerful you don't have to have the answer you've seen it grow it, it, do you think it's still going to keep growing 
Um, I think we're, we're at a, a, a point where we've really got to change the way in which we're doing our interventions to okay. actually have a positive impact. Yeah. Um, wow. One of the challenges we've got is getting the right evidence and the right research to do that. There's only 14% of our interventions have actually got evidence, yeah. we still carry on doing the rest. So we really need to get the right research, the right targeted approach, mm. and that'll make it the biggest impact for us. Wow. Uh, John, we thank you very much yeah, again. For the that. time has run out again. Uh, we could, we've, we know this is the third time we've spoken to you yeah. now. It's absolutely fantastic. As I said, we could uh, doing a great job. Pull thank up, you. A, pull up a seat and talk about it all day. And it's fantastic what Breakthrough are doing. Uh, I'm sure over the years we're only going to talk to you more and more. Uh, com what you're doing with community footy on, a, you know, a couple of weeks ago up in Port Pirie with the SNFL, I was there. Um, up there with you and it was fantastic and the response that you got so uh we'll put the link in the video as well we're gonna in on facebook we're gonna tag you Must. We'll, we'll tag yeah. you in the post as well so for anyone out there that uh is looking to seek help get in contact with breakthrough and uh john we, we thank you for for your right. contribution thanks very much guys thanks for inviting us back no worries thanks and stay everyone. tuned before the bounce uh we're gonna have plenty more and that was brought to you by the exchange hotel in gawler